Well, hello, everyone. I am just uh, syncing my laptop with my phone, and then I will begin our project for today. Okay. All right. So, hello. I see we have a few people on here. Oh, I got to turn the volume down. There we go. Okay. All right. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Susan. Hi, Carol. Okay, we've got some people in here. Hi, Benia. Okay. Um, so today I'm going to do um, a resin project. Uh, I was supposed to do it two weeks ago, but, you know, uh, life gets in the way. So, hey, Patty. So um, I'm finally getting my stuff together here and uh, thought I would present it while I can because from day to day, I never know uh, what's going on in my life. So <laughs> I'm sure a lot of you are the same. Anyway, this is the bowl. Um, I made a lot of mistakes on this one, and I didn't do a second one because uh, of the amount of resin it took, so I'm doing the second one today. Um, had I paid attention to the instructions, uh, there are a few important things that um, I wouldn't have missed, but, uh, you know, sometimes I just get too impulsive, and rather than read all the instructions, I just fly by the seat of my pants and there you have it. Um, so we're going to be using alcohol inks. Um, I have a resin flower mold. Um, I've invested in several different styles of resin molds lately, as you know, since I post all the time about stuff. Um, but this is a really pretty one. It's got a design in the center of the flower and it does get stained. The alcohol ink will stain it, but it has absolutely no um, bearing on using it again. So not a problem with that. Um, I have my resin, I have my alcohol inks, I have mixing cups. I will have a handout for you with all the supplies that you need. The um, the amount of resin for this project is a little bit um, variable. You don't want it to be super, super thick so that you can't bend it into the shape that you want, uh, but yet thick enough that, um, that it holds the shape. So what I did, like I said, there were a lot of variables that uh, hopefully, you know, you can learn from my mistakes and... <laughs> Hopefully the second one will turn out better than the first one did. Um, I bought a cheap plastic bowl at the dollar store. This is a little bit larger than ideal. Okay. Um, I didn't measure this. I probably should have. Let me see if I can do that on my mat here. This is probably a 12 inch bowl. Uh, 10 inch would probably be better. And the reason I say that is because um, you're gonna set this uh, flower into the mold, into the bowl to mold it into the flower shape. And um, it should have been a little bit smaller. I would have been able to not have such a flat bottom. Well, you want a flat bottom, but this is wider than I would like. I would like it to be a little bit more, um, I don't know, curved up a little bit more. So a, a, a smaller bowl would have worked a little bit better. But then you can't get too small because that's a lot of ruffling on the edges of your flowers. And that's a little bit tricky to do too. So, oh, hi, Donna. Uh, so I don't know. Um, initially, I thought I would do this video in two parts, but I'm kind of thinking that might not work because once I make this initial pour, 
it has to sit for about, I think, six hours. And then you take it apart, six or eight hours. But I'll, I'll double check on that to let you know. Um, because you want to be able to remove this from the mold when it's soft enough, pliable enough that you can mold it in the bowl. If you wait too long, if it cures too long, then you can't really bend this in the way that it needs to be bent without breaking it. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> because I did that with a smaller version. I had this idea. I did that. And also, I haven't gotten my color combinations down yet. This one is really blah. It's just so dark. It's blah. But this is when you buy this uh, big flower mold, it comes with five, I think it's five coaster molds also. So um, I was playing around with these and I wanted this to be curved too, to have a little bowl shape for this. But this is quite thick if you can see that. It's quite thick. Uh, I poured it to the height of the mold, which I really could have gotten by you know, with less resin to make it not so thick. So when I peeled it out of the mold, I put it in a bowl, but the bowl was really too small, but I was like pushing it, pushing it in the center, you know, to get those um, petals of the flowers to cup up and it broke. It, it just cracked all the way around where I was trying to push it in. So there's something to be said about following <laughs> directions properly so but you know this is how I learn I learn by making my mistakes all the time so um, you know so this is one that I did I was able to cup a little bit just give it a slight curve you can see that there and I put that or this one I put this one in a in an, a bowl that I have laying around. I put that one inside and kind of just gave it that gentle curve like you do when you dap a piece of copper or metal or whatever. Um, and then I put something in the center to hold it down. So it dried in that shape. So this one came out all right, except um, I put some white alcohol ink there and I really don't like it. But, you know, that's a design choice. So that is this bowl. I guess if I, it, it just looks like I smeared it in there, the white. And I guess if I could have controlled that a little bit better, I might like that white in there. But um, as this one is, uh, I, I'm not thrilled with it. So, but I learned. Patty's asking, resin is firm enough not to pick up the texture of that blue bowl. Uh, well, Yes and no. Um, it was cured enough. This bowl has the texture in it too. And what I got, the only thing that I got from that are these little tiny dents at the bottom. I think you can see that. Uh, that's all that, that transferred on there. But you can prevent that. that that's another thing I'm gonna show you. When we do the big bowl, I'm going to use one of these silicone baking sheets. It's a round thing. And that's going to protect. Uh, let me just show you here. It's easier to just show you than try to explain it. Um, let me move the camera a little bit. All right. So here's the bowl. All right, here's the bowl. And then uh, say say I just took this out of the mold and I wanted to form the petals. This I was actually going to explain later, but why not do it now too? Um, so you put this resin sheet in here, or not resin, the silicone sheet in here, and then you'd put like a, a gallon jar of something, a gallon container of something to weigh this down so that way it all holds the shape. And this 
sheet, the silicone sheet, protects the the resin piece from um, from getting the the design or whatever that might be on the bottom of whatever you're weighing this down with. Okay. No, that's okay, Patty. It's okay. Uh, I'll still go over that. But it it's like a lot of stuff you just you just learn. Okay. So what I had done with this is I had a smaller piece of silicone and I laid it on top of the flower in here and then maybe put like a quart size full bottle, maybe like the resin bottle, you know, just put that on top of here to just keep it from moving or shifting, whatever. Okay. Just enough weight in there that it's not going to move. So a little piece of silicone in there and then something to weigh it down. Okay. All right. So that's that. But the little coasters are really cute as flat coasters, but also as these little, you could use them as little trinket dishes too. So that's that. All right. There's just all kinds of fun resin stuff available. All right. So we'll get back to that in a bit. Anyway, I guess my point was that I was originally thinking of doing this in two parts because of that. Um, and I just didn't want to pour another bunch of resin um, for a bowl that maybe I don't really need. <laughs> you know, I do a lot of this stuff as demos, but then I have all this stuff and, um, and it piles up. So it's like, maybe I'll gift it. I don't know what I'll do with it, but some of it is not that great. So I don't really feel like, you know, I could do that especially, but, um, um, but that's why I didn't do, I could have had a bowl ready to go, but because there's so many hours in between this stuff, it would be hard to time all of that. So my brain can't handle that. So, so okay. So I am going to, this is the other thing. You need to do this in the right order because I had watched a video, Mixed Media Girl. She's on YouTube. She has a lot of resin videos. She's very good. That's, I think all she does is resin stuff. So she's gotten quite good at it. Um, and she had done this project and, you know, you're very welcome to look her up after this is done and maybe she will explain it better than I am. But, um, um, she was saying also the proportions were hard to figure out uh, as far as how much resin exactly you need. But I, I just jumped ahead of myself there. My, um, I had watched the video, I don't know, a few weeks before I did the project. And in my mind, I remembered everything that she said, but I really didn't. So um, you need to have your resin mixed and ready to pour before you lay your alcohol inks down. Because what I did, I did the opposite. I went ahead and I decorated my resin mold with my ink and it started to dry. And I don't know if you can see, I think you can, where I got these lines where the alcohol ink just dried. It dried right on the mold and it didn't spread out like it should have because it dried. So, um, with a couple of coasters, I did it, you know, I tried it again and I didn't have that issue, but the resin gets mixed first, then you lay down all your inks. Okay. So let's get started with this. Make sure that you have a, um, a protected work surface. I'm trying to get the camera in the right angle might be a little tricky. Um, I have my mold here. I have my inks. I'm going to use like six different colors of ink. Uh, let's see. I think I have to move that over a little bit more. All right. All right, you have to have little measuring cups. 
These are little medicine cups, disposable. Um, so you can have, you have to have accurate measurements when you're doing this stuff. If you have more of one part of the resin than the other, your, um, your mix is not going to be good and it will be sticky and it will forever not cure. So you want to make sure that you measure evenly. All right. Hopefully we can get this all in the frame and you can all see what the heck I'm doing. All right. So I've got some uh, alcohol. It says water, but it's alcohol in here because I use this also for uh, clay with water and I didn't have an extra bottle. So I just dumped out the water and I put some alcohol in it. Uh, this one I think is just regular isopropyl alcohol. 91% um, is the alcohol uh, strength recommended. I don't think this, this is it though. So I'm using what I had. Um, also make sure your mold is clean because little crumbs and stuff get, get in there. So, um, uh, let's see here. All right. So we've got our resin. We've got our mixing cups. I'm going to use a larger cup to mix everything in. I'm going to use a tongue depressor only because it's a, a lot of, uh, ink that I'm moving around. Uh, but craft sticks work okay too. So you can certainly use those. And let's see here. I'm going to measure. I'm going to measure. Well, I'm going to move this out of the way because I don't want to be mixing on top of this. You also want a level surface, whatever you're working on. You want to make sure it's level so that one side of your mold isn't, you know, like the resin isn't sliding and it's not thicker on one end than the other. That was another issue with the first bowl that I did. My The table that I was working on was not level. So one side of my flour is thicker than the other side. All right, so gloves are a must. You need to wear disposable gloves. You should have some paper toweling around. I've picked out my inks that I'm going to use. I have a variety of uh, colors and I'm going to use those. All right. And I'm going to go with 12 ounces of resin. It's probably, I, I'm pretty sure it's more than I need, but uh, that's what I'm going to go with. So these little measuring cups are two ounces. So this would be four ounces. Then I would need another one. So I'll need three for the hardener and three for the resin. Okay. That seems like an awful lot of resin. Okay. Um, maybe I'll do it this way. I'll do five and five I'll make 10 ounces of resin. Okay. So I know it's like being a mad scientist. All right, so I'm going to put my gloves on and have a timer, either set a timer or uh, your phone or whatever. I'm going to set it for three minutes. And make sure that you have uh, the hardener, I'm sorry, the resin has a black top on it and the hardener has a white top on it. Try to keep them straight. So you put the right top on the right container. So this is the hardener. I'm going to pour my measures of this first. And you cannot help but make a mess with this stuff. It just... It's just the way it is. 
probably the most accurate you would be is to weigh uh, your resin. But um, I'm not doing that. Because I am the girl who doesn't. Well, I should say that eyeballs just about everything. All right, so I'm going to put my top back on that. For my equal measures, there are all kinds of resins on the market. I cannot tell you uh, that much about uh, different brands, only that I always look for something that says crystal clear, although I would imagine most of them do, that don't yellow over time. But um, I have found that some resins still will yellow over time, even though they say crystal clear, will not yellow. And this is one of them that claims that. And so far, it's lived up to uh, its claim. All right. So now I'm going to transfer or dump all of these, all of the resin in the bigger container here. You want to scrape all the sides and the bottom and everything to make sure that you get all of the resin out. Otherwise you won't have an equal mix. And of course, these containers uh, are not reusable. Uh, they're disposable. They're fairly inexpensive, so don't even try to save them. It's a big, huge mess working with resin. So don't even think about recycling these. I've got a list of resources that I'll post later uh, for Amazon uh, for all these products that I'm using if you choose to get them from there. <clears throat> There's quite, quite a bit of a list. All right, now dumping in the other. And the alcohol inks <clears throat> absolutely wear gloves uh, with them. I'm going to change my gloves after I'm done mixing this because I have resin on my gloves already. And I don't want to um, touch my alcohol ink bottles with, with the resin on there. Also, I have a tray that I'm working on, just a, a, a plastic tray that I can move uh, that's lightweight that I can move out of the way for this to cure. And, um, and I'll explain all that stuff as I go too, because I will cover the project so that, you know, pet hair, dust, uh, little things that float in the air don't um, contaminate your project. One more. That's the last one. So this is 10 ounces that, um, that I'm mixing. Five ounces of each product. Generally, I'd rather have too much than not enough when I mix, but I don't want to be super wasteful either. The only other thing I could suggest if you do mix more 
than, um, than you need is to have another project ready to go. And that way you can pour that extra stuff into there. All right, I've set my timer for three minutes. I've got my tongue depressor. I'm going to start the timer. And I'm going to gently mix the resin together. You, it, it's going to form bubbles when you mix, but you want to keep those bubbles to a minimum if you can. And you're going to scrape the sides of the container and the bottom as you go to incorporate it all together. You just don't want to whip it. You know, if you whip it, you're just going to get a gazillion bubbles in it. And um, you really don't want that. I still am having issues with the bubbles. Uh, the surface bubbles I can pretty much take care of, but it seems like there are some internal uh, bubble issues. And I was uh, popping the bubbles with a, a micro torch, and I'm beginning to think that, um, that maybe that's not the appropriate uh, thing to use. So I'm going to use a heat gun today. Uh, it's just a craft heat gun and I'm spraying my alcohol on here and we'll see if we can pop those bubbles with that. I'll show you once I've got this poured, I'll show you a couple other uh, resin projects that I've been working on that I did and still have in the works and uh, talk about some of the, the uh, failures and some of the successes of that and Hopefully, if you decide to do these projects, you can avoid some of the issues that I came across. So I'm always happy to show you guys, you know, different things of what I'm doing and stuff. But as I've said many times before, I'm not an expert on any of it. Uh, I just do what I like. Um, I learn a lot like, like you guys, you know, just from watching other people doing stuff or just kind of uh, trying it on my own and see what happens. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I'll tell you, I mean, one of the, one of the things that I really enjoy about uh, doing these demos and stuff is kind of in the beginning when I was doing stuff, I wished that I had somebody to learn from um, and buy the right things like the first time around instead of buying all this stuff and figuring out that it was either not the right stuff or more than I needed or I don't know, stuff that just didn't work well. All right. My timer has gone off. But somehow I don't know if I've mixed that all the way. It doesn't hurt to go a little bit longer when in doubt you know you can do that a little bit longer it takes i think a good 45 minutes or so of working time so it's pretty safe to say you can go a little bit further than the four minutes the tongue depressors work really good though um they're nice wide uh, or area for for uh, mixing large amounts rather than the craft stick. Craft sticks are good for smaller smaller containers. All right, we'll go with that and I'll set that aside now. All right, now I'm going to change my gloves. Okay. And alcohol ink um, stains. It stains a lot. So you want to make sure it gets in your skin. And uh, not in your skin, but it gets in the, like, like the dry skin areas. <laughs> you know, it really, um, now see, I should have moved this resin cup when I had the other glasses. I mean, the other gloves on. Get sticky with that. 
Okay, so now I'm going to move my mold over here. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to take my inks and I'm not going to use the white. I do, I do have white in, um, now these are all Ranger alcohol inks, but I bought them when Ranger really had the corner on the market. So, uh, there's tons of different al alcohol ink brands out there now, but this one, <coughs> this one is called a mixative and it's got a little ball bearing in here. So if you use something like this, you have to make sure that you shake that all up and uh, get that ball loose. But like I said, I'm not using it, but that's just a little thing to know. Or maybe I'll put some just in the center. Why not? So you want to make sure that that's mixed. And make sure if you have alcohol inks already that the caps are not stuck on, um, you know, before you use them and they tend to make little crumbs, like the ink will dry around the, the uh, cap and unless you wipe them off. And uh, I kind of don't do that. So, all right. So what I'm going to do is I've got my colors. I've got a butterscotch, a pink, an orange, red pepper, a uh, meadow green and a blue. I may try something else too. I don't know. We'll see. Now, I don't think I'm all in the frame too bad here. Let's see if I move this down just a bit. Maybe that's a little better. All right. So I'm going to take. There's no rhyme or reason as far as the colors that you're going to use. It's just whatever you like. So I'll just mix some of this in the center. I'll do a little bit of there too. And a little bit of white. There. Okay. Now I'm going to just run a stripe. Of color. Okay. It's kind of fun. Okay, well, maybe a little bit more. All right, so that's applying your colors. I'm going to go back to the alcohol, I mean, to the resin. And I'm going to start to pour from the center very slowly.
And I hope I didn't blow it on this one. I could have used some blue in the center there now that I'm looking at it. Just let it go down. Let it move slowly. And you don't disturb the colors once you're pouring. That was another mistake that I made, thinking that I could move the color a little bit and that it would spread out uh, more evenly. But what I did was I made a mess with, um, with the colors combining. The colors kind of combined and it didn't look very good. Now, I took a level to this table before, but it doesn't seem like it's moving very well. Now, this bowl is going to be light, but I guess that's okay too. Yeah, see, I put 10 ounces in there, and I guess I should have gone for the 12. All right. Now, let's see. I'm going to take my heat gun. And I'm going to try to move this resin over you have to be careful with the heat gun too that it doesn't push it too much may need to help this a little bit. All right. Move all the stuff out of the way. I'm going to lift up my, my board and kind of make that resin flow and fill up those other spaces. This would tell me that the table is not level, but yet I had two levels out here and they both had the bubble in the center. So it lied to me. Push this a little bit. All right. This is quite pale. It's pretty, but it's quite pale. I would have liked a little bit more color added to this. So you saw what I spread out, and I could have put a few more lines of color in there, I think, to, to just brighten it up. Now, my impulse last time, or my instinct or whatever, was to kind of push the colors out with a craft stick. And when I did that, I kind of muddied it. Uh, and made it quite dark, <laughs> but I can't help myself. So I'm going to, the resin right here, I mean, not the resin, the alcohol ink that I've got right here in this space had already started to dry by the time I got the alcohol or the uh, resin poured in here. So I'm just going to very minimally move this around. But definitely... It was drying already, but alcohol ink, ink is just that. It's alcohol, and it dries very rapidly. And 
We just didn't want to have those definitive lines in there that really didn't flow the color like I expected or wanted. You like the colors, Tammy? I like them too, but they're very subtle. It's very subtle, very pale. I'm going to screw it up. I should have probably put some purple in here, too. That probably would have been nice. All right. Now, if you take your head and kind of look down across the top of the mold, you'll see little bubbles forming. And... I'm going to go over it again once more with the heat gun. Just lightly. Some resin projects take, uh, use the heat gun to push the resin for a different look. Uh, but that's not what we're trying to accomplish on this. But it is popping the, the bubbles nicely. going to give it a spritz of alcohol across the top. All right. Okay. All right. I'm really tempted to add more, more alcohol ink, but I don't know if that would be a mistake or not. It probably would. Um, oh, what the heck? Maybe I will just add a little dot. This is the thing about learning, learning what you can do and what you shouldn't do. That could have been a mistake here. Okay. Rhonda, if you're watching, you're probably saying, Sue, don't do that. Because <laughs> she was here the day that I uh, was messing around and I made it, I just made a muddy mess. I don't know. I don't know if I should have done that or not. Deb, you know I would. I'm very predictable when it comes to stuff like this. Breaking the rules. I don't know. I kind of like it, but I don't know. I know I can't help myself. I'm I'm just I'm that impulsive person. But see now I feel like I need to add another one on the other side to even that out. So go figure. All right, I'm gonna check on the side here for bubbles again. Okay, I'm going to leave it alone. As much as I really want to still mess with it, I'm going to leave it alone. All right, so then the next thing I'm going to do is cover this. And I don't have the appropriate size cover for this, so I'm makeshifting. Um, and I'm just going to put a few of these empty cups. Here, move this down the line. All 
Okay. And I'm going to cover it with a plastic box lid just to keep dust off while this is curing. All right. Let me change the camera here and we'll talk. All right. I will check that again in a couple of minutes and um, check for bubbles again. All right. Let me get this out of the way. I've got these silicone mats. These are great. They'll also be in the resource list um, to make your uh, area that you work on clean. Uh, or make clean up easy. All right. Grab a few things. Please show you my earrings. These are my earrings. These are going to be a project coming up. These are these little silver. It's all fine silver except the bee. He's he's pewter. And the B is optional. You know, you can put whatever. You, you don't have to put anything in there, or you could put a silver bead in there, or something else. But there are little, uh, little thingies that I thought were kind of fun and interesting. So, thanks for asking. Yeah, they're uh, they're fun. I I like silver. I like silver a lot. All right, so let me move the camera down and I'll show you some of the stuff that I've been doing. Um, okay. Ah, out of the holder. There's always some technical difficulty with me. All right. Hope I didn't make you motion sick here. All right. So in this resin quest, um, I also saw on mixed media girl, um, she did these resin bowls and I thought they were quite cute and, uh, looked them up on Amazon and bought one of the molds. And, you know, these take a considerable amount of resin as well, but I thought they were awfully cute. Um, they would make really nice little gifts and they take the thing with this resin that I'm finding is it takes longer to cure to really become hard. They will be formed when you take them out of the mold, but they're still a little squishy. You know, if you, if you squished the project, it would, it would really bend in but the longer the longer they sit several days after you've poured them uh, they they really harden up so they're they're quite firm now and they're just kind of cool i just thought they were really cute so to get these effects where's my mold oh sorry Oh my God, I'm like a bull in a china shop. <clears throat> All right. This is the mold as you get it when you, um, when you purchase the mold. Like I said, I got them on Amazon. So am I in the frame here? Okay. All right. So it's kind of weird. And this is where you pour in your resin. This is how it looks on the outside. And then you mix up your resin and you pour it from the center. But before you do that, you turn it in to get these colors. You turn the 
mold inside out, which takes a little bit of doing. So you turn it inside out like this. Okay. And then I ordered these little pearlescent. This is chameleon powder. These are new to me. I've never worked with this stuff. <laughs> yeah, like taking off a girdle. You're right. Boy, there's a lot of people that don't even know what a girdle is anymore. But um, those of us of a certain age certainly do know them. Never forget them. Uh, anyway, this these uh, powders come in lots of different colors. Um, so I just bought a smaller set because I didn't really know how much of these I would use. Uh, I do like them, but they get all over everything. It's like glitter. You know, you have to be careful. I would recommend wearing a dust mask, uh, you know, just, just to have it on so you're potentially not breathing it. Um, when I was done working with these, I had, uh, and I was washing my face, when I was looking in the mirror, I had all this, sparkle all over and I, I couldn't believe how much I got on me. It was on my arms. It was everywhere. And really all I was doing was applying it right here. So I didn't have um, a lot of, uh, you know, area to cover. Uh, these I think are a type of mica powder, Mary. I, I'm pretty sure that's what they are. Um, these just have a lot of the, the uh, sparkly effect in them, but they're very, they're very pretty. Uh, but they do come out uh, rather pale. This is, well, not super pale, but, you know, this is this one, for example. And, oh, the bottoms of these could be sanded down a little bit. They're just a little bit rough on the bottom, but I didn't even mess with it. To, to try it out, but uh, if you didn't want to do that, you could probably glue a little piece of felt on there if you wanted to do that too. So, um, but yeah, you just take these powders and you just smoosh them all around here and then very carefully put the mold back together. It's amazing that the mic powders stay on as well as they do after you manhandle this thing. Um, but they do, they stay on real well. And then, like I said, you mix up your, your uh, resin and you pour it from within and then it'll come to the top and there'll be bubbles like around the edges that you can blow off with uh, the heat, the heat gun and maybe a little alcohol. Um, but I don't see, I mean, you can't really tell if there's bubbles within this because the mica powders kind of cover everything up. So, um. I, I thought they, they came out really great. I was pleased with them. So, um, like I said, they would make nice little gifts. The other thing is I bought a pumpkin mold. And um, Deb, I don't know if they're dishwasher, dishwasher safe. I probably wouldn't. Um, Put them in the dishwasher but the art resin says that you can um, use it with food that I can't remember the exact terminology but they make cutting boards they do all kinds of different things if you look up art resin you know they have little videos and stuff and they make uh, they say it's food grade so and I'm sure not all resins are, can say that. So uh, I would say that this is a pretty safe one. This does not create any strong fumes. Uh, some resins do. And uh, you'd think I work for the company, but I don't. So uh, I, I've just used it and I like it. So that's, um, that's why I'm recommending it. Now, the pumpkin, if you're interested in something like this, um, the pumpkin is really cute. And if you look on Amazon, there's a couple of different uh, versions that you can buy. There's uh, This was the single pumpkin that just 
this was it. And then there's another one that looks kind of like a pumpkin house. It has like a little doorway, like a little extension thing on here that you could buy. I didn't buy that one, but um, there's other options. And uh, my grandson's here today, so he was asking me if they have Christmas trees because he, he'd like to make some of those for gifts. So they do have some Christmas tree molds, and I'm going to order a couple of those and see what happens uh, with them. So anyway, the thing, if you like the pumpkin and you're going to get one, there's a few things to know uh, that I learned the, the hard way again. And like I said, when I first started doing resin, uh, torching off the bubbles was what was suggested. And so, you know, that's what I was doing. Well, I wasn't thinking properly. And when you go to pour the top of the pumpkin, you want the stem to be, well, you don't have to, but I wanted the stem to be green. So I mixed up a small amount of green resin and poured it in there. And then the bubbles would rise to the surface. And I took my torch and I waved it across there to get the bubbles, not thinking that I was messing up the silicone because this silicone was not protected with other resin. It was just something that just did not compute in my brain that that could be a problem. So when I went to remove the lid, it was horrible. It was just, I let the green resin set and then I mixed the orange resin and I poured it in there. And then when I went to unmold it, the resin all in that area, this is all I can think of the cause was for me probably destroying the silicone with that flame. Um, and it just didn't want to pull out. It, it was just horrible. So then I started looking up, um, solutions, you know, resin stuck in molds, you know, what do you do? And, uh, said to soak it in some really hot, almost boiling water and soak it and soften up the resin. And then you could pull the piece out of the mold. And that worked, except this was already damaged. And I was trying to pry, you know, this lid out of there. And all I did was, this is just totally ruined. So I ordered another pumpkin mold and I haven't gotten it yet, but I'll repour it. I will not use a flame again. And hopefully I will be able to uh, get a nice little pumpkin from that. There are bubbles, however, on this, but they're on the bottom. You can't really see it unless you're inspecting it. Uh, I don't know how you would eliminate these uh, because this is, it's buried in, in the mold. So all that's exposed to you, the heat gun or whatever is it's all inside. So that's uh, something to consider as well. But I don't feel that that's really an issue because it just looks really cute just the way it is. And I'm not going to worry about those bubbles. <laughs> so, and I suppose it showed more because it's a transparent, and not uh, not got the powders on it or anything that that might mask it too. So you could certainly put powders inside there too, just like I did on this other little dish. It's just a matter of what you want the outcome. There are also um, what they call resin pigments, and I don't know if they're the same thing. If you look it up on Amazon. Some of them say alcohol ink, but there's nothing on here that makes me think that it's alcohol ink. It doesn't smell like alcohol ink, but it says resin pigment on there. And I did use some orange alcohol ink and a few drops of this stuff for this pumpkin, and it seemed like it worked uh, pretty well. So I don't know. But like I said, there's resources for all this stuff. Uh, if you don't have things already, a lot of us uh, crafters, hobbyists, whatever you want to call us, um, 
dabblers into the unknown <coughs> have a lot of this stuff already. So I've had alcohol, uh, certain alcohol inks for years. And as long as they're covered up, um, they don't dry out. So uh, they're usable for a good long time. One other thing I want to show you. Um, okay. All right. Let me, let me flip back to the, to the flower mold. I'm going to check this out again. I'm just going to raise the lid here. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just looking at it. All right. Looks okay. Um, the other thing is I'm going to go back to the bowl and molding it because I don't, I don't think I'll do another demo on this. I think really the next step, <coughs> like I said, is you peel out your flour from the mold. It's going to be real floppy. Okay. After about, um, I'd say about eight hours, I would peel that out of the mold. You can periodically, like after about the six hour mark, you could go and check the resin and just kind of pull the, the mold just away from the resin to see if it, if it comes away when it, when it comes away cleanly, I would say about like eight hours. Um, you can peel the flour out, put it in your bowl, arrange the ruffles. There wasn't much choice to, you know, to make it really super roughly with this particular bowl. I think maybe a 10 inch bowl would have been much better than this one. This one's just too large. You arrange your ruffles, make sure that you're centered so that you're, you're even all the way around. Put in your silicone sheet and then weigh it down with a full gallon of something just to keep it, um, keep the pressure on it and keep it in place. <coughs> Excuse me just a minute. Okay. You keep that in place. So, and like I had said before, if there's any kind of design or lettering or anything that's on the bottom of your bottle or whatever you're pressing this in, the silicone sheet prevents that from transferring to your resin. Okay. So then after, I would say maybe 24 hours, you know, take this out, check it out, and <clears throat> just just see how it is. You know, see if it, if it's getting hard, and then I would let it sit in the bowl. You don't have to have the the gallon on it anymore. I would let it sit in that bowl in that form um, for several days, because I think another issue. Like I said, this was the guinea pig bowl. Another issue was that I took it out of the bowl too soon and it kind of, I think, relaxed and opened up more than I initially had, if, if that makes sense. Um, so I would leave it, leave it sit like that for a good several days as it hardens, as it cures fully, and then it's not going to move afterwards. Okay, so I think last but not least is this floral that I did with another resin mold. This resin mold uh, was a set. This there was two trays. Uh, one, this is the smaller of the two. The other one is, I don't know, several inches larger all the way around. And it comes with handles that you could actually make a serving tray out of this if you wanted. Um, 
with the larger one, I would say that that's probably uh, more uh, usable as a tray. This one, I had a different idea in mind that Deb Henready uh, told me about. And uh, it also, well, it comes with the, the one that I got from Amazon. It comes with the two molds, a smaller and a larger, and four different handles. <clears throat> I think two in silver tone and four in gold tone. I mean, two in gold tone. And the hardware, you know, for them. But you don't need the hardware because the principle is you pour your resin in the mold. And then, I guess, as it sits or sets, you just push your handles into the resin and then the resin dries or sets around that and then you don't have to use screws or anything like that. Um, they're quite nice. If you want to look them up, you know, do a search on there. Usually the, the people that <coughs> put these products out have little videos with them showing you how to do these things. So, excuse me, I'm talking too much. Okay, so anyway, this is, um, it's real pretty initially, you know, to look at and everything. Uh, I was happy with the design, embedding the flowers in there. But there's like a gazillion, a gazillion bubbles internally. <coughs> it's like, it's like between, uh, this was poured in two pores. Um, I did the initial pour and then um, I let it set for a few hours and then I came back and then I laid my dried flowers in. Okay. I didn't do it in initially because I was afraid they were going to float when the resin was too wet. <coughs> Sorry. So then after I got all the flowers and leaves and things all placed, then I came back with a second layer of resin and poured that over it and then let it cure for however long. This one was very bendy when I took it out of the mold, but it has really hardened up. It's been about a week, I want to say. Uh, it, it's quite stiff now, so that's good. The, the problem is those bubbles, and I don't know how to eliminate that. At looking at it like this, it looks great, but Deb had sent me a video of how this was used in a way she saw that it was used, and they have these little um, wooden lights there's like LED lights inside of <coughs> like a little strip of LED lights in here. And this was, I guess, the idea was to be like a night light kind of thing. And you put the, the, uh, the tray inside the lights and I'd have to have the light off of the house. I mean, the, the my room light off <coughs> for you to really see the glow of it. Uh, tip it this way and see if you can tell like that. Probably not. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I'll hold it up. Maybe that'll show you a little bit better then you can see all of the bubbles that are trapped inside the two pieces. And they're very, very small. Yeah, you can see it now. They're very, very small. And you can't feel them on the surface. It's not like they're sticking above. This is like internal. So that's the issue that I'd like to... Uh, to figure out, you know, to solve that issue uh, so that doesn't happen because this is such a cute idea. 
Um, it would look better if I had the light off, but I'm not getting up to go shut that off. But you can see enough from, from what I'm showing you here that um, it just shouldn't be that way. So I need to speak to a resin expert maybe <laughs> and try to figure out why why it does that because that shouldn't be that way. And another thing, um, Deb, is there's a certain thickness to these for the mold. And I would suggest that you don't pour uh, your molds or pour the resin in to the very top of any of the molds because it makes it difficult to remove the pieces and also uh, you'll actually get parts of the mold of the silicone pull away and stick to the stick to the resin I'm feeling it right here and that if you're not careful you can destroy your mold it'll just rip it so yeah Deb I don't know I mean I, I really should um, talk to somebody who manufactures this stuff or, or whatever you know because you know it's such a pretty piece but the bubbles ruin it you know at least for me now these are another find uh, that I got on Amazon uh, to hold these uh, Deb had seen a video uh, I don't know where it came from but um, she had done this that's where we got the idea to do this and she had these lights and I did a search and I finally found them um, but the inner edge the insert the slot whatever you want to call it was not wide enough to fit this tray so uh, luckily my husband was able to modify this and widen these slots to fit that's another reason not to pour your resin all the way to the end of the mold too, to the top of the mold too. Um, it just, you just don't need to have it quite that thick. So just another little tidbit there. So it's fun. There's, there's a lot of things. I had never done a lot of these things with resin. Um, <clears throat> I was never a huge fan of plastic things, <clears throat> but, um, but they have their purpose. They they have their use. They're they're very pretty. You can do a lot of interesting things. You can make things personalized. You know by putting your own type of um, mementos or whatever in in resin. So there's lots of uh, possibilities. So so that's my spiel. Um, I I enjoy it. I really do. Um. <clears throat> and like I said, I'm going to get the, the uh, Christmas tree ones and see how those look. Uh, and we'll see what, what happens there, what interesting things we can come up with. Deb says, you can really see those bubbles. I love it as a light. Maybe the company can explain it to you. Yeah, you know, maybe so. I'm, uh, I'm at a loss with that. Patty says, that's what happened with the wedding flowers we did was told we had to coat the elements individually and then pour them and put them in a bigger pour. It's possible, but boy, would that be tedious to, uh, to coat all these things. I think it would be tedious. I, I don't know. I could maybe do a smaller, you know, even the other coasters that I did, uh, I don't know, a couple months ago. They all had the internal bubbles, not the whole, not the whole uh, area, but more concentrated in the center. And it was the same type of bubble. So um, maybe coating them is the answer. I, I don't know, but I'd like to uh, get to the bottom of that. Hey, Wendy. Um, yeah, you know, it, there's just uh, lots of things that. That would be nice to know and have everything work out really great. Okay, uh, if there's any questions, uh, go ahead and 
have at it. I think I'm going to wave that, uh, or maybe I'll just put a little bit more alcohol in. I mean, not alcohol. Spray a little more alcohol on here on our project. See if it pops any warm bubbles. That looks good. So it's going to take a while. I'll show this to you um, in the group tomorrow, probably. I'll take it out of the mold. <clears throat> well, no, not tomorrow. I'll take it out probably before I go to bed, uh, which is probably around 1 or 2 in the morning. I'll come down here and I'll pull that from the mold and put it in the bowl and then uh, show you a picture of it tomorrow because um, uh, it has to be out. You know, I have to mold it before it gets completely hard. So, okay, did I put a link? Okay, I'll check that out in a bit. Okay, so I think I think that's going to be it for today. I'm going to still search for a smaller bowl. Um, I don't know where I'm going to find one, but maybe I'll do a search on a 10 inch bowl and see if I can get one for cheap. Uh, I hate to spend big money on stuff that I don't even know if it's going to work or not, but that was the only size the dollar store had. It was either real little or big. So, um, so I thought I'd take a chance, you know, it's, it's a dollar and a quarter store now, not, not, not dollar store. Um, they also have like uh, geode uh, slice coasters, um, molds. You know, they, they there's a ton of different things. In fact, that's what fell on the floor. I'm going to pick that up and show it to you. And, and then I will conclude for today. This is the geode slice that I did and there again the colors are better on this one this had the um I put ink and some of that uh, mica powder in there and then I got a gold pen I don't know if it's a leafing pen there's a name for it it's, it looks like a marker but you shake it it's got like a little ball bearing in there and I line the edge with that and the inside edge with that. But I think there's more interesting ways that this could be used. Um, I'm thinking maybe some mica flakes, uh, something around the edges uh, to give it more of a defined, uh, I don't know, agate slice or geode slice. I don't know which one you'd call it, but. Oh, yeah, a statement necklace. Sure. Why not? <laughs> that's honking that's big anyway there's lots of fun things out there and uh, I just wanted to show them to you and uh, get your creative juices going all right I'm not sure what I'm going to do in two weeks maybe we'll do these earrings um, I don't want to I've been kind of on a resin kick but I don't want to stay on this uh, for demos all the time it's time to move forward with some other uh, ideas too so Patty says her daughter makes galaxies with the mica powder. That sounds interesting. I'd like to see some of her stuff. It's always fun. Always fun to find new things and spend more money. <laughs> you can't do it without it. All right. Uh, I will have the handout for you. The handout, um, is um, done with the pictures of the the bowl that I showed you that was done that has um, the visual mistakes in there. So, uh, you know, unfortunately you have to kind of bypass that and remember uh, the order of doing it. It shows in the picture, it shows the alcohol inks in the mold while I'm mixing the, the resin. That's not the right way to do it. Mix the resin first, then pour your inks in there, and then apply the resin. So just keep that in mind. So the, the handout is not perfect. Um, I think I did correct it verbally, 
but the pictures are a little bit um, not 100% correct. So. Okay. All right. So I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks. Thanks for joining with uh, me today. And um, we'll do something fun in two weeks. God willing. All right. I'll see you in the group. Take care. Thanks for being with me. I always enjoy it. Bye-bye.